Daytona Moto 2 765. It may share the look of the previous Daytona, however, it's dripping with goodies. Full carbon bodywork. A Moto 2 derived engine update. Brembo, Stilima, Calipers and MCS Master Cylinder. Plus an electronic suite lifted from the Street Triple. It's also £15,765, although that must have something to do with the fact that this is the first ever Dorna licensed bike. Are we looking at the last ever super sports bike from Triumph? Good evening and welcome to Silverstone. We're at the launch of the brand new or very exclusive limited edition Triumph Daytona 765. Now, it's a very limited run of 765 in the in the Europe, uh, and we've got another one next door for the US and Canada, which is slightly different. I'm with Stuart Woods and the chief technical chief engineer. Chief engineer. Yeah. There we go. So you know you're the man to talk about this bike then. Yep. So the bits we don't know then it's 128 horsepower, 130 PS, yeah. and uh, you've done quite a lot of work to the internals. It's not just a case of getting the uh, you know the street triple engine. There's quite a lot of work gone in from the Moto2, etc, etc. Can, can you yeah. explain a bit more about the, the engine? Yeah, sure. Well, as you know, the Moto2 engine was derived from the 765 Street Triple engine. Yeah. So we did a lot of work um, and have produced an engine that produces a lot of power, a lot of torque. It's the torque and response that the riders are really enjoying. Yeah. Okay. So when we did that work, we had to build a development prototype bike to test the engine and to decide what um, feel we wanted the engine to have. And obviously the bike to put that engine into was a Daytona. Now obviously everyone just fell in love with that and it was a case of, well, we've really got to do this. We, you know, you it's have. too good an opportunity, yeah. right? So the opportunity was there to develop that engine, the Moto2 engine, for the Daytona. So you're sort of going around a, a loop here you developed your Moto2 engine from the 765 motor, yep. which in itself was developed from a 675 Daytona. And now we have to make that Moto2 engine um, production durable um, and legal. Right, okay. Okay, so what we had to do to achieve that is a lot more work on top of the Moto2 development work. So that work's happened partly in parallel but obviously we've been uh, competing in Moto2 now with the engines this year, the whole season. And this bike has just been launched now. So the sort of things that we've had to do to um, give us a road going engine is we've used different material for the pistons. It's higher grade, it's higher strength, um, higher done durability the Moto, done the Moto2. Done the Moto2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've uh, fitted DLC uh, coated gudgeon pins, that's reduced friction, so that gives you a little more performance and more durability. Uh, we've worked on the rods, we've got different material uh, crankshaft, again higher grade material, um, better strength, better uh, durability and better hardness. So there's a lot of things that have been developed to give you more performance that then when you add the requirements to make the bike road legal bring you back to uh, the bike that we've got. Now, the chassis is identical, so the, the the geometry is exactly the same. Did you ever think about tweaking that, or was it a case of if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Um, we did try. Right, um, okay. We tried different springs, different damping. We did a complete setup on this bike, as it's now a single seat focused yeah. bike, and we came back to the same settings yeah so yes it could have been different but we have come back to the same settings it's such a refined chassis again 675 daytona has been raced yeah it's been on the road for many years we've spent a lot of time developing it and refining it and so have other people racing and we know it works and a lot of people go oh well it's just you know it's it's uh, it's just the old daytona but like i said it, that is one of the sweetest handling bikes ever built and you've got this motor yeah. now it's like you said it had to happen all yeah. that all that uh, fuss over the when we rode the uh, prototype here last year yeah. the day after the GP and it was just the the interest was just phenomenal and like I said I'm just so pleased you've, uh, you've done it finally um, in terms of the frame then you're talking about the anodized this I, again, I didn't really notice it in the pictures 
beforehand, but it's um, it's a definitely a, a more of a sort of premium look. It's lovely. Yeah. It's it's really nice. Um, it's removed the the paint, which in itself is reduced mass as well. Yeah. So it's a it's a win-win. Yeah. You know, we've done something that is of a much higher uh, finish um, and is lighter. Fantastic. And the Stylema, Stylema, I don't know how to pronounce yeah. it. Yeah. Um, was that a case of just bolting the best on? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, they are the latest Brembo brakes. They're fantastic. They, they, they the, Yeah, they've <laughs> been developed for um, to optimise cooling as well. Yeah. Um, we've tuned as well um, to get more bite, more power. That's the focus with this bike, to make it as sharp a riding bike yeah. as you can get. And how different is the uh, the gears to compared to the Street Triple, the sort of the gear ratio? Okay, well, we've had to um, adjust the gearing to suit the Daytona, really. Yeah. So it is a completely new gearbox. Yeah, um, yeah it's completely new <laughs> okay. and suits the Daytona, yeah. And in terms of electronics, I mean, uh, is it similar to the Street Triple in terms of, you know, the, the parameters or is it completely different? Well, in terms of the basic art architecture, yeah. It's the same, yeah. which is great because there's an engine platform there that's already got ride by wire. Yeah. That's, that's really important. That allows us to dial in the ride in modes with uh, engine maps and adjustable uh, traction control. Okay, so that's really important. Um, and also the up and down quick shifter, yeah. so Triumph Shift Assist. Again, all um, facilitated by having ride by wire. So all that's there, but you have to tune it specifically for each bike and uh, for each engine tune. Now, I know you're not the, the styling guru, um, but did, was there any ever thought of, of changing the uh, aesthetics or was it a case of just leaving it as it is? Well, to be honest, we really like the way it looks yeah. and this is the ultimate Daytona. Yeah. It wasn't a case of uh, creating a new bike. No. This was the opportunity to get that engine in, to really focus on uh, the performance of the bike, but also the way it looks. Yeah. I mean, to have all the, the carbon fibre and say the anodized frame, yeah. it all just adds those other levels of detail. Really I've got nice. to say, it looks so much better in the flesh. You can't see the carbon in, in the pictures at all, unless it's obviously close up. But um, the pictures, were they Jerez, the press pictures? Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, you look at the bike now and in the flesh, it's just, yeah, it's very, it looks very nice. Um, now, going back to the ultimate Daytona, yeah. um, when Miles stood up on stage earlier and said that this would be, or Steve said that it would be the final Daytona. So are we looking at the last sports bike that Triumph is making? Well, I guess sports bikes have evolved a bit. Yeah. Um, Street Triple RS yeah. is very much a sports bike. Okay, so but yeah, okay. super bikes, as in a, So, yeah. this is the ultimate Daytona. Okay. This bike, <laughs> this is the last yeah. of this motorcycle. Okay. If you didn't know, it's 15765. And is there, are there any available in the UK? Or are they all sold out? I don't know. No, you would go to your dealer. I think because I, I, there was someone on social media earlier said that they work in a Triumph dealer and they weren't allowed to put a deposit down. So, yeah, hunt high and low if you have to find one. But yeah, thanks, Stuart. You're welcome. Cheers.